So welcome again. Thank you. Uh, can you please can you please introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Johnny Miller, and I'm a photographer, and I'm the founder of Unequal Scenes and African Drone. So what is Unequal Scenes? Unequal Scenes is an exploration of inequality using a drone. So I'll find examples of really high levels of inequality, and then I'll, I'll take a drone there, and I'll actually fly above it. Um, and those photos and that video will then form part of the project, for example, on my website. Um, I do a lot of research based on where these places are. Um, sometimes I do video interviews and or portraits of the people that live in these neighborhoods, um, and that becomes part of the project. So I've done it in six countries at this point. Um, I hope to go to a few more before it's over and do a lot more interviews. So uh, do you think it's, is it journalism or art or a mix? I think Unequal Scenes is, is the perfect mix between art and journalism. I like to see it as art more than journalism, just because I see myself as an artist, as bringing some sort of idea to fruition through the medium of photography, rather than reporting on reality. And I know that's a subtle distinction, but that's the way that I like to look at this. And I think that that's quite important when you start talking about a project and talking about, for example, aesthetics, and you start talking about the boundaries of your project, for example, as to whether it's art or whether it's journalism. And maybe also a bit of activism? Yeah, definitely. And in fact, I've been encouraged throughout the two years that this project has been going on to be more activistic, I suppose, in my art, right? To actually have a voice, a strong voice about what I believe is going on in these photos and what I want to do with the photography. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do with the photography, by the way, is provoke a discussion. So my stated goal with this project is to provoke a discussion on inequality. Which, uh, which maybe brings us to uh, African Drone, your NGO. Uh, what is that about? So African Drone is an organization of African drone pilots, of African journalists, and anyone who's really interested in supporting us, whether that's fundraisers or whether that's tech enthusiasts or whether that's people who aren't based in Africa but are interested in using tech in Africa to tell stories. And the reason I set this up is because there's really no pan-African drone organization right now. And I realized that all the drone pilots on the continent, of which there's quite a few, um, kind of were looking for a repository of information and looking for a network that they could rely on, both to do more business, but also to tell stories in the way that only a drone can give you through drone journalism. So we're actually helping to define what that means as well. What we're helping to define what drone journalism actually means in the African context and also provide resources um, for African storytellers. Okay. Um, your mission statement says that you want to use drones for good. What, what kind of uh, positive impact can drones have on society? Drones can have an amazingly positive impact on society. Um, probably the number one, and the reason that I'm sitting here is, is through journalism, through storytelling. So drone photography and drone videography, it's not just a cool new perspective, but it's this ability to democratically reimagine the earth in a way. Like I can fly a drone, I can fly a drone above the earth and I can look at it and I can manipulate that data by myself. So I don't have to worry about third parties like the government or big tech companies needing to do that for me. So it's, it's quite an empowering technology. Um, I think drone mapping is probably just as important, which is the idea that you can take a drone and you can actually map an area in really high resolution um, and that it's georeferenced, which means that GPS points are embedded into that data. Um, previously, that was only the domain of governments um, or really rich people who could fly airplanes um, above the earth or use satellites. And why that's important is because a lot of people in Africa don't have land tenure, which means that they don't actually own the land that they live on. Um, there's no chain of uh, wealth. There's no chain of authenticity to who gets to buy that land or what people can do with it. For example, the state. The state can seize land if you can't prove that you own it, right? Um, so I think drones have a big role to play in that. So drones for good means not only telling stories, but actually providing almost evidence for legal proceedings as well. Okay. And what are the biggest challenges you're facing with uh, unequal scenes and an African drone? Um, there must be some problems. I'm thinking of like, you know, restrictions, limitations, and then uh, there's also maybe privacy issues, surveillance issues. They have a history. Um, you said once they have a history of violence, the drones. Mm. 
So the biggest problem with drones right now in an African context is definitely, definitely regulations. So from country to country, every country has their own drone regulations. Um, some of the countries in Africa make it very, very difficult to fly drones at all. Some of them have a legal process like South Africa, but they make it very, very, very expensive. And some countries have very little regulations on the books at all. So you're constantly not knowing if you're doing something legal or not, which makes it very difficult to operate at any sort of scale. If you're a business, it's hard to invest in your business if you don't know what you're doing is legal. If you're a business it's very, or a journalist, for example, it's very difficult to do something if you don't have the money to apply for a very, very expensive permit like in South Africa. Um, I think that causes a lot of gray activity to take place in the drone ecosystem in Africa. So there's a lot of not really black market, but definitely not legal market activity because the enforcement is very, very poor. So you, you get into a situation where no one really knows what's right. And that's part of what African Drone seeks to do, not only provide you an up-to-date repository of the legal information of how to fly in each country, but then also agitate and push for deregulation in various countries, specifically in South Africa, Kenya, and Tanzania, so that in the future, future drone pilots can feel empowered to build up drone businesses, which is really going to be the way that the, mm, the economics of flying drones uh, become sustainable. And people have done studies uh, in South Africa specifically that the drone industry could be worth billions and billions of rand and could employ hundreds and hundreds of people, potentially previously disadvantaged people in the South African context that's very, very important, but that the government's stifling those opportunities because of these heavy-handed regulations. So it's not just that people want to fly drones because they're fun, it's actually kind of a critical component of the new economy, the new tech economy in Africa. And we have this opportunity that we need to seize to leapfrog poor infrastructure, to use new tech, to tell stories in an African way about an African continent that's different than a European or an American perspective okay. that we should be supporting. Yeah, and um, maybe we can get back to the, the negative sides of drones uh, okay. for a minute. Like some, some people are skeptical because mm -hmm. of uh, the military history and because you, uh, drones have been used to you know, track people and for surveillance and you know, there's the privacy issue and some say you know, it's a boys club, it's just mm -hmm. in, you know, uh, men flying military toys. Uh, how do you respond to that? We like to stress the good parts of flying drones and we like to empower people who are using drones for good. So you can use drones to reimagine the world around you in very, very positive ways. It's incredibly empowering. And we'd like to support the companies and the people who are doing that in an African context. Um, there's no doubt that as technology progresses, we're gonna be having really interesting ethical questions raised about how to use drones in a sustainable way and how to do it in an ethical way, especially when there's very uh, large degrees of inequality and power at play in most African countries. So who gets to fly the drones and what do people do with that footage? I think that that conversation is something that really, really needs to be thought out carefully more than the safety concerns need to be thought out. I think it's really the ethical concerns that need to be thought out by politicians, journalists, civic organizations. We're trying to facilitate some of those discussions with African Drone and Unequal Scenes' stated goal is to provoke discussions on inequality through the use of drones. So that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Um, so you've worked in, uh, in and out of South Africa and you've also been to several places in Asia and uh, which, which, what, what kind of social or geographical borderline would you like to document next? What's like a very interesting destination for you? I think Unequal Scenes has some ways to go, actually, before the project's finished. And so I would love to go to classic borderlines around the world that would be very difficult to photograph, but I think would look really, really compelling. Um, the number one that I can think of would be the wall between Israel and Palestine. I think that that would be a really compelling unequal scenes. Um, the border between the US and Mexico, another one. There's a variety of cities um, that are very divided around the country, I'm sorry, around the world that um, I haven't been to yet. Brazil um, is a country that I'm probably going to go to next that's really high on my list. Um, 
but I also kind of want to expand the project and it might not be unequal scenes per se, but I want to take the aesthetic and I want to take the style of using drones to look at inequality and apply that to environmental issues as well. So I'm looking at ways to expand the project and expand to other, I guess, activistic sort of um, uh, types of storytelling using drones that don't necessarily have to deal with wealth inequality, which is what I'm looking at here, basically, which is wealth. So um, how is drone journalism different from, say, using satellite images and mixing that with aerial photography and you know, conventional methods? What, what, what makes it unique and powerful, in your opinion? Drone journalism is unique because it's accessible by everyone and for everyone, which means that drones are cheap enough and they're easy enough to operate that you or myself or anyone who has the money to buy a drone and that price is coming down all the time can go out and they can take a photo of their world. They can reimagine their world. They have that data, it's theirs. They don't have to rely on intermediaries like big tech companies or governments to go out and shoot it with satellites, for example. Um, and that is extremely empowering, right? Um, what do you need to get started? So to get started, you really need, um, I would say, so to get started, drones all the time are coming down in price, but I'd say you need at least six hundred to a thousand dollars to buy a drone that can shoot and is reliable enough to shoot safely um, a lot of drone companies exist i would really only recommend probably dji which is the largest one and they make very reliable very robust drones um, that shoot 4k video and the stills that they take are quite high resolution the newest one comes out at 22 megapixels i want to say um, and pretty much every single one of their drones pretty much every drone in general can also take high resolution maps because then that involves a process called photogrammetry where you're stitching together lots of photos and you don't necessarily need high resolution. So the idea that you need a, a really expensive drone to do what I'm doing is, is not true. I mean, it's an extremely accessible technology, more accessible perhaps even than um, some smartphones. So uh, anything you'd like to add? Like like a really interesting drone adventure story or a fun fact? Um, look, I believe that drones are part of the future media landscape. I believe that drones can be used for good. I believe that they can be transformative. I believe that everyone should have access to drone data. I don't believe everyone needs to fly their own drone, but everyone should have access to drone data. And that involves a whole ecosystem of deregulation, of training, and of networks of people that can support you as a drone pilot or as a journalist who wants to tell stories with drones in the future. And so with African Drone, those are the things that I'm trying to do. Those are the things that we are doing. Those are the things that I'd love people to partner with us to do even more. Do you think drones will someday replace conventional cameras for film production? Yes, I do believe that drones will largely replace uh, manned camera operations on feature film sets. I live in Cape Town where there's a pretty big feature film industry and a lot of camera operation has already become automated. You'll always need a director of photography and you'll always need assistance to work that camera but uh, dollies, jibs, drones, a variety of automated camera systems are already in place that make shooting a lot more accurate and the movements a lot smoother when they're complicated. It also makes movements replicable. So for example, a drone, you can program a drone to take a sweeping movement that you could then replicate exactly, for example, six hours later. And then you could take a sunrise shot and fade that into a sunset shot to give you a really interesting and almost impossible to replicate idea that the director may have that would be impossible to replicate without drone technology, really without the software that powers the drones. Um, um, what would be the biggest advantages a drone will give you well, when you're working as a camera operator, a director, filmmaker? I think the biggest advantage that drones give you is the freedom to act out the ideas that you have in your brain. And as a creative person and knowing a lot of people who are in the film industry who are creative, 
up until maybe five, six years ago, we were limited by technology, right? Remember how big and bulky cameras used to be and you, to, you used to have to use either film or then digital media. Now we're getting down to SSD cards with very small cameras that have very high resolution. And you're putting them on drones that can fly in three dimensions. And with replicable camera movements, you could even do four dimensions. You, can, you could do the same movement in time six hours later, eight hours later. So you can start to play with all these really interesting ideas as a creative camera person with the technology that's available to now because it's getting cheaper. It's getting really cheap. Um, and I think that's really exciting. I think we're on the cusp of a whole new revolution of how people engage with and create media. For example, virtual reality is a perfect example. Um, where drone 360 cameras are starting to become a reality this year, actually, they're starting to really take off, no pun intended. So you can actually put on goggles and you can be there without the drone visible. You can actually be flying above the Grand Canyon or you can be flying through city streets in Hong Kong or uh, Cologne or any city, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that's just going to open up a whole new generation of budding filmmakers to the possibilities of using technology to tell stories. What is the general reaction to your work in, in the media industry? Like, w what is the, the kind of feedback you get on unequal scenes and the projects you've been involved with? Unequal Scenes has gotten almost universally positive feedback from people. Um, there is a small consensus um, that questions the reasons for the project, the ethics behind the project, the choice of focus on inequality. Um, so that criticism I take very seriously and I try to engage with as much as I feel I can. There's obviously some criticism that I'm not qualified to respond to. I'm not a PhD in economics, for example, so I don't know everything there is to know about inequality. What I do know as an artist is how to display images that get people talking about inequality. So that's really where I want to place my energy moving forward as well, is as an artist who provokes conversations. And in that sense, I don't think anyone can really criticize that because it is a technique that we can apply to anything. Right? So I think future projects that I work on aren't necessarily going to be focusing on inequality, but I want to use that technique that provokes conversations about, for example, environmental issues as I go off into the future. Okay, and um, it's about the multi-drone project. Yeah. Uh, and one of its aims is to you know, use multiple drones, uh, some of which all, uh, work in a semi-automatic way. Uh, you know, to get like very sophisticated uh, drone cinematography. Yeah. And um, can you think of a couple of scenarios where, where, where that would be really useful? Like s something you could do with this approach that um, we can't do right now with just the one drone or the conventional approaches? I think multi-drone is a really interesting concept and I am really interested to work more with multi-drone. Um, in Cape Town, as I mentioned, we have a budding film industry in Cape Town. We've made some major blockbuster movies in Cape Town. I know a lot of stunt performers and I know a lot of camera operators in Cape Town. And the one thing that they always complain about is really complex, dangerous stunts need to be done several times sometimes because of either camera malfunction or because they need multiple angles on that. So the most obvious one that comes to my mind is just multiple cameras being able to fly in different three-dimensional positions around, for example, a stunt, let's say a fireball or an explosion, so that you would only have to do it once. So that the DOP and the director could work together and say, we need a, a tight shot of the fireball from this angle, we need a wide shot from this angle, maybe we need the top, and maybe we need two or three on the bottom. And with drones becoming cheaper and cheaper and cameras becoming cheaper and cheaper, I think that that's a reality that directors will have the opportunity to engage with, um, honestly, to save on money, to save on time, but then also it's dangerous to run complex operations in, in major film sets, like explosions or people jumping off of buildings, right? So stunt performers also, I think that would benefit them. I think just having multiple drones in the air capturing the same aspect of a shoot is going to be really interesting to see where that develops because I could imagine by having different focal lengths as well, by having an 85 millimeter versus a 24 millimeter lens on two drones with two separate cameras, you might be able to play between the two if they were flying in the same direction in some weird way that I can't 
really even conceptualize right now, but you might see, for example, in hyperlapses, mm -hmm. right? Or you might see in the DJI Mavic 2's new technology where the Mavic 2 zoom can actually do a dolly zoom, which is a classic, for example, a Hitchcockian cinemat cinematographic technique, exactly. Um, maybe there's a way to play with that with multiple drones, with multiple zoom cameras. I don't know. I think this is a really exciting sort of frontier that we're all on, and I'm so happy that multi-drone is actually playing around with us. The, the future will be bright and feature multiple <laughs> drones in cinematography. And the future will be televised, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks again for talking to us. Thank you. Thanks, Johnny.